So right now we're going to develop the fourth stage of our still life drawing with the ground tone. And that stage call is called the poster stage or posterizing or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you're familiar with um, the sort of shepherd fairy style of, of postering where um, certain areas are either with the color or with value um, very flatly laid out. And what we're going to do is, <clears throat> beginning with the shadows, create a tone that is just slightly different from the ground tone. And we're going to go over every single shadow in the drawing, the shadow side of objects, the cast shadows, and put the same tone down. Um, all you're thinking is right now is just differentiating shadow from ground tone. Um, you don't have to make the shadows darker or lighter than any other place in the whole drawing. The point is to simplify this stage as much as possible so that you don't have to think about a whole bunch of different things at once. All you're thinking now is where are the shadows and where should I put some more tone down. Once we go through with the pencil and put tone down, then we go back through and erase and kind of do a, a double-sided poster effect, leaving some ground tone and erasing some and adding some. So you'll see that I'm just going through every single shadow. I'm not being very careful about edges, and um, I'm just differentiating the shadow side of objects and the light side of objects. Now, the sides of this box are black, but that doesn't matter. Um, it's going to get a lot, a lot darker eventually, but that comes in, a, in a, at a later stage. Right now, all you want to pay attention to is just the location of the shadow, not the exact value. So I've got this sped up, and uh, but even so, it really only takes about 15 minutes or so to do this stage if you have a simple still life like this. If you have a more complicated still life, it may take a little bit longer, but the point is for each stage to be simple and quick and effective so that you can um, move through the process with uh, a great deal of efficiency. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about with a long-term project like this is that the speed of a long-term project doesn't come from applying value quickly or getting to the correct values immediately. The speed comes from following the process exactly. And when you follow the process, what happens is that each stage takes however long it's going to take, but when you draw naturally, what tends to happen is that you repeat the same sort of things over and over. Same mistakes, you do the same stage over and over, and you don't really advance the drawing. And what we're trying to do is, when you get to a certain point in the process, you ratchet forward and you don't go back at all. So here we're switching into postering the light side of all the objects. So just like you added a little bit of tone to differentiate the shadow side, now you're going to take away a little bit of tone to simply differentiate the light side. Again, it doesn't matter that that which like how light everything gets. What matters is that you simply differentiate from the ground tone itself. Um, so you don't have to erase all the way back to the white of the page. That would be way too much work, and it would be counterproductive because you don't want to get back to the white of the page since you spent all that time covering it up. You just want to get it, get to a tone that's a little bit different from the ground tone. Um, and it may not come across as a huge difference to anyone but you sitting in front of it, but as long as you can tell where that is, um, at this point, you're in good shape. And again, when you erase... The reason that you don't want to get to the absolute white of the paper is that there's going to be one or two very shiny spots, typically, in a still life, and that's where you're going to get back to the white of the paper. And it may only be like a half of a centimeter square or a quarter inch circle or whatever. Um, so here you're just kind of mildly erasing. And one of the interesting things about this sort of method is that the eraser becomes a drawing tool, just like a pencil. It's like a negative pencil, if you think of it that way. And typically we think of an eraser as a mistake fixer. And the sooner you can begin thinking of an eraser as a drawing tool, 
the better off you're going to be. You'll notice that the eraser leaves marks, it leaves textures, and it does, and it leaves marks and textures in a way that a pencil can't do, or if you were to do it with a pencil, it would be so incredibly tedious that you wouldn't want to even approach that. So, the point that I'm trying to make is that you can be a little bit loose with this. You don't have to have everything perfect at this stage. You don't have to get out the blending stump and make sure everything's smooth. You're just kind of um, leaving your marks, going through the process, and um, kind of laying out what you're going to do in the future of the, of the drawing. Now, this is also the most sort of fascinating stage because this is where the drawing develops very quickly. You immediately begin to get a sense of the light and the sense of where the drawing is going to go. And that's kind of what's exciting about this stage. Um, and even though there are some cover details on this book cover, I'm intentionally ignoring differentiating any areas of the book cover like that because that's going to come in later. That's going to come into my more rendering stage. Here, I'm just trying to get the act actual structure of the book laid out. And for at least half of this drawing, all you're going to focus on is the structure, not the detail. So any sort of detail that does not contribute to the actual physical structure of the objects you're trying to draw isn't worth putting in at this stage because you're going to make so many changes before the end of the drawing. So you want to leave a lot of room to work. Um, you know, you don't have to start putting in wood grain textures or doing anything fancy at this point. All you have to do is differentiate uh, from the ground tone uh, in both directions.